For my entire life, I've been a Windows user, and honestly, this operating system has been good enough for me. The most important thing is that it does its job. I didn't care about bugs, high RAM usage, or privacy concerns. I already have 16GB of RAM, which is more than enough for everyday tasks and light editing for my YouTube videos. And privacy concerns? Pfft, I have nothing to hide. I have no money, I'm an ordinary guy with nothing at all. But here's the thing, in my previous videos, so many people started commenting stuff like, bro, try Linux, it'll blow your mind, some even said I'd never go back, and when I say many, I mean hundreds of comments. That's when I started getting curious. Before those comments, I genuinely didn't care about Linux at all. That stuff looks terrifying. Just look at all those terminal codes, the penguin logo, it felt like horror for the tech industry. But curiosity got the better of me. So today I'm gonna try this penguin OS for the first time. Let's get started. So yeah, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend I've never touched Linux before. I actually did, but in the dumbest way possible. Back when I was a kid, I was obsessed with those hacker movies. You know, the ones where a guy in a hoodie hacks the pentagon in like 10 seconds. Yeah, I wanted to be that guy. So what did I do? I went straight to YouTube and searched how to hack someone's account. I know, I know, cringe. One of the tutorials told me to install a virtual machine and run this mysterious operating system I'd never heard of. It was Kali Linux, you know the one with the dragon logo, super hacker vibes. I installed it on my tiny 4GB RAM dual core potato PC using a virtual machine. I don't even know how I managed to split RAM and CPU cores, but I did. And surprise, it lagged like hell. Obviously I didn't hack anything, but hey, that was my first encounter with Linux. I was just a dumb kid back then, so I had no real opinion. But today for this video, I'm gonna do it right. I'm not jumping into hardcore stuff like Arch or Gen 2, alright? I downloaded Oracle VirtualBox and installed Ubuntu, because apparently that's the most beginner-friendly version out there. And to be honest, I'm not ready to debug kernel panics just to open a browser. So let's start with the setup. After installation, I saw how fast and beautiful everything was. The UI of Ubuntu looks nice for a first impression. The essential apps are located on the left, but you can change that in settings. You can move them to the right, top or bottom. It's not like the Windows taskbar. It only shows essentials, which is cool. And if you want, you can even make them invisible when tabs are opened. But one thing that made me a bit anxious was the absence of a refresh button. I use that all the time in Windows. I know it's optional, but it works like entry stress therapy for me. All the standard icons I'm used to are at the top. Calendar, power button, brightness control, settings, dark light mode toggle, which is very convenient, and even a screenshot button. Speaking of that, taking screenshots is way easier here, especially for beginners. You just right click and hit take a screenshot, and it's all customizable, unlike Windows where you press print screen and hope for the best. Another thing I noticed, the apps. You just click the icon on the bottom left, and all your apps are right there in one place. You might say Windows has the same thing in the start menu, but let's be honest, if you're a beginner, you probably don't use it. That menu just collects junk, news, weather, recommendations, stuff no one really uses. But as an old Windows 10 user who customized everything to suit his needs, I usually press the Win key and access everything I need. Speaking of the Win key, in Ubuntu it's called the Super Key and it opens up multiple desktops where you can have tons of tabs open, depending on how much RAM you've got. It's great for multitasking, you don't even need two or three monitors like you would on Windows. That's one thing I really liked. And here's the best part, it's fast. Unlike Windows, Linux doesn't make your old hardware cry. Even if you're stuck on 4GB RAM or using an HDD, it still runs smooth. That's kinda impressive. It really shows that Linux was built with programmers and IT pros in mind. And speaking of tools that help you think like a programmer, a quick thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Brilliant is a powerful platform designed to help you master key concepts in math, science, and computer science. It guides you from foundational knowledge to more advanced problem solving through clear, structured lessons. I've been exploring their scientific thinking course, and it seriously helped sharpen how I approach problems. You're not just memorizing, you're applying ideas step by step, building real understanding. Whether you're into algorithms, logic, or data science, Brilliant gives you the tools to develop deep thinking skills and reach your learning goals. 
And if you want to try it out, use my link brilliant.org aman and you'll get a 30 day free trial plus 20% of an annual premium subscription. That's brilliant.org aman, link in the description. Thanks again to Brilliant for supporting the channel, now let's get back to it. Okay, interface and aesthetics aside, even though I'm talking about the good things and how convenient it is, I have to admit that people choose Windows over Linux because Windows is a more beginner-friendly OS in comparison. And if you're gonna use Linux as your main OS, you need to learn it. Even though it sounds like I'm exaggerating, there are actual resources dedicated to learning Linux. But as soon as you learn this OS, you gain a superpower. It's just hard at the beginning. Yeah, you might say that you can learn Windows 2, all the shortcuts, how to use CMD and get superpowers as well, but compared to Linux, the scale isn't the same. On Linux, there are no limits, no candy crush, no trial antivirus, no random apps you never asked for. You install only the things you actually need. There is no bloatware or unnecessary pre-installed junk, it's clean. On Windows, meanwhile, you've got Windows Defender eating up your RAM. And yeah, don't say you can turn it off because that's not obvious for beginners. In Linux, there's barely any malware or viruses, and if they exist, they're much less common. When it comes to privacy, I noticed that Linux has no telemetry or force tracking like Windows does. Which means, if you care about cybersecurity, you'll probably lean toward Linux. You get full control of everything, no one's tracking you, but you also have to build convenience for yourself. In Windows, everything is convenient and already done for you, but you give up control. So basically, you choose an OS that keeps you safe and comfortable, or an OS that leaves you exposed but gives you full control over everything. When it comes to learning, the hardest thing, by far, is the terminal. This thing is the boss you have to defeat, but once you get it, it becomes your best friend. Even though it looks like CMD in Windows, it works completely differently. With the terminal, you can install, update and remove apps, navigate the file system, System, create, move and delete files, search for files or text, control system processes, and more, like thousands more. But be careful, writing the wrong command can cause system problems. Some people even accidentally disabled their Wi-Fi or audio just by copy-pasting random commands from Reddit. And that's just the beginning. Once you become more advanced, you can animate things, automate repetitive tasks, and probably do millions of things, as long as your imagination allows it. But okay, let's talk about the little things that I've noticed as a Windows user when I explored Ubuntu for the first time. After installing it and admiring how beautiful it looked, a message popped up on the screen about an update. I clicked OK and updated it. And that was the last time it ever asked me, because once you update Ubuntu once, it doesn't bother you again. And the update process was incredibly fast. As you probably know, in Windows, updates are the most unwanted thing ever. And when they happen automatically, they can ruin your entire plan. Updates on Windows take forever, and after all that, nothing even changes, as usual. Sure, I've disabled automatic updates in Windows, but that's not something beginner or average users typically know how to do. The difference is that in Linux, updates only happen when you want them to, and they are usually super fast. After updating the system, I checked out the default apps. Not only do they exist, but they're actually usable most of the time. For example, the text editor in Ubuntu reminds me of Windows Notepad, but it's more functional. You can open new tabs like in a browser, switch between light and dark mode, and even use keyboard shortcuts to boost productivity if you enjoyed writing. Then I opened the settings app expecting something like Windows settings. But it's not the same, it's way more organized. You can do nearly everything in one place, customize your desktop, manage devices, and more. One feature I liked was the account manager. You can add multiple accounts and use them to log in, which I found very convenient and secure. There's also screen time and screen time limits, just like in macOS or iOS. Overall, everything is there. To be clear, there are tons of features that are super convenient, especially if you're coming from Windows, and I haven't even mention tiny things like how easy it is to open zip files with just one click, but for a complete beginner, Linux can still be tough to learn. That's why most people stick with Windows as their main OS. Now I finally understand the Linux religion and why people are so passionate about it, even encouraging others to switch. In this video, I didn't explore other Linux distributions and I honestly have no idea what they're like, but I've heard some are more difficult like Arch Linux, where you need to write code just to do basic things and use use the terminal often, so I choose to showcase Ubuntu Linux specifically as a beginner-friendly example. If there are any advanced Linux users watching, please leave a comment with tips or must-know info for beginners. If you liked the video, thanks for watching and take care.